Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Thank you for joining us again on Zoom in on the Halal Metropolis, where we look at how Muslim communities in the Southeast Michigan region are dealing and surviving with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Today, my name is Asma Baban. I am one of the researchers um, working in Halal Metropolis. And today we're joined with Sumeya Ahmed Sheikh, and she has started the Michigan Muslim Community Grocery Service. And um, Sumeya, thank you for joining us. How are you? I'm good, alhamdulillah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thank you for being here. Um, I just wanted to ask you, you know, why don't you introduce yourself? Tell us a little about yourself and what the Michigan Muslim uh, Community Grocery Service is all about. Yeah, um, of course, and Ramadan Mubarak for those watching um, and those who celebrate. Uh, my name is Maya, as Asma said, um, I currently reside in West Bloomfield with my husband and twin boys. Um, and I've been doing this work for a little over 10 years now, working in the nonprofit world um, to make sure that our communities are engaged with volunteer services, um, interfaith services, and getting at the vote. Um, specifically for this project, which um, was launched by myself and um, a friend, Ria Basha, and several volunteers who really helped run this project, the Michigan Muslim uh, Community Growth, uh, Grocery Service Program was launched a little over a month ago when COVID really hit hard into our mm -hmm. communities. Um, we quickly realized that there was this kind of need for adults and those who um, were high risk. Um, there was this need to help them um, get their groceries. We didn't want them to leave their homes. And um, I had just put up a status on Facebook, you know, the, the first thing that usually people do, right? Go to social media. Yeah put it up um, to see what was going on out there, um, who needed help, and how myself and other volunteers could really just rally the troops together to uh, get the word out there. And Ria commented and said, hey, you know, I've been wanting to do something like this as well. Um, we quickly got on the phone um, and we realized the biggest concern was this whole um, thing about um, getting our groceries um, and helping uh, helping those who needed that service um, because servers like Shipt and Instacart and things of that sort were so backed up um, and people weren't even you know able to access those. Um, and so quickly within 24 hours, we um, both are women who work within this realm of work. So we kind of knew the nonprofits to kind of reach out to and the volunteer, you know, how to kind of get that rolling. Um, and quickly within 24 hours, we had over 200 volunteers that were ready to help um, and uh, really just, you know, get to work. Wow, that's amazing, the, the speed at which you were able to sort of really mobilize uh, is incredible and I think very telling of the efforts that we're seeing during this period. Um, so, you know, what does, uh, why don't you tell us a little about what the grocery service you actually does like what is the aim what is the demographic that's being served i know you mentioned that you know because of services like instacart and other grocery services being um backed up that this was a way to sort of relieve that uh, bottleneck that was happening so do you mind elaborating on that yeah so initially um we wanted to we wanted to start small and locally so we um started and we thought of starting in troy rochester where um you know, we had some partners and volunteers who were ready to kind of get to work. Um, and then really quickly, um, other volunteers from other areas, um, which we now call like kind our, of our grocery leads, um, said, hey, we want to replicate this in Flint and West Bloomfield and Detroit and Hamtramck and so on. Um, and that happened really, really quickly as we started reaching out to networks. And what um, it looked like was that people wanted to kind of have the service where one, they could, uh, you know, we could help, like I said, the high risk as well as um, adults who, and the elderly who shouldn't be leaving their homes to get their groceries. Um, and then we quickly realized there was others reaching out who just didn't have the means and the, um, you know, the means to buy groceries. So how could we kind of combine these services? And we developed a hotline um, similar um, to what other services do where, you anyone could you know from any area of Michigan could call this hotline um, and you would have a grocery lead on the phone that you would get directed to that area so um, it was very similar work to like a phone menu where when you call mm -hmm. say press one for Troy Rochester press two for Detroit Hamtramck and so on and once you clicked on that area the lead of that area would answer and uh, they would take your grocery intake form 
um, and you know they would collect you know what are the items that you need um, uh, when do you need them by um, and then also how will you be paying so when it came to that option we had the options of you know using uh, things like Venmo and Chase to pay for your groceries but um, if they opted in and said I need financial aid assistance um, we would help cover their costs for their groceries um, and that was kind of a sub arm to this work and helping collect those funds. Um, once a grocery lead took that intake form, they reached back into a larger base of volunteers, which um, when we started was 200 and now we have over 500 volunteers oh. um, divided into specific areas that they represent. And basically that lead would just say, you know, so-and-so, this is their phone number, this is their address, and this is what they need. Um, and people just kind of pick up those orders. And from there, the volunteer really just, you know, takes it full throttle and contacting their client, working with them to make sure that the grocery is coming on time. Um, a lot of the times these volunteers were um, kind of, you know, they would be at the grocery store and some things would be out of stock. So they were serving as this kind of like on the spot, calling them up saying like, hey, we don't have this brand of milk, but we can get this and that. Um, so really just working with them to make sure that they felt comfortable um, and they knew the items that they um, were getting were in good hands and they were going to be received on time. So um, it was a work in progress. I would definitely say that from what it looked like the first week to now, like almost two months later, um, it's we, we've kind of developed and kind of narrowed down to where this focus is and where most of our clientele is coming from. So um, like I said in the beginning, we were um, trying to go to every suburb, but really quickly we realized it, it was more of the inner cities um, and uh, people who have less access to materials sometimes that needed it. So um, we are really uh, working on areas like Flint, who uh, Flint, Detroit, Hamtramck, Dearborn, Dearborn Heights, um, East Lansing, Lansing, um, those are kind of some of our high areas of where we're serving right now and where our volunteers are really um, helping out. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, just hearing you talk about it, it's so detailed and there's so many little, you know, wheels that are turning that I think a lot of people, you just think, oh, it's a grocery service, you just deliver groceries to someone's house, but it's a lot more than that. And uh, it's incredible to hear you talk about the number of volunteers that have also increased. So I'm curious about your volunteer base. Is that mostly like, uh, is, is that coming from a certain population? Is that a certain demographic? Are they a certain age? Do you mind speaking on that? Yeah, so like I said, although Ria and I kind of spearheaded and kind of brought it to life, this work really wouldn't have been possible. But one, the volunteers who joined who are actually um, going out there, doing the groceries and so on. And two, to our community partners. So the different mosques and communities who opted in to help spread the word to actually harbor those volunteers. Um, uh, so our volunteer base ranges from, uh, well, you have to be 18 or older. So I should you know, put a disclaimer out there. When our volunteers are onboarded, they're taken through a very detailed process because COVID-19 um, is very infectious and we wanna make sure that um, although this is a time that we want to help people, we also need to make sure that we are taking the precautions that we need to. So, you know, contactless deliveries, um, 18 and older, making sure that they really are aware of the scenarios that they may be in. Um, even when money is handled and making sure that they're not contacting the person that they're giving the money, it's just like left outside under the doormat and so on. Um, but our volunteer ages really range. Um, you see a lot of like youth leaders from different mosques. Um, people who've come home um, who maybe like worked in different states like a lot of young adults who work in different states or went to school and now they're at home and um, although they have like a lot of um, other things to attend to they really just want to give back and be there um, they see their grand you know they see their grandparents or their parents who may not be able to get out and they think of others that are maybe in those scenarios so um, we see a lot of young adults who are really eager to help um to help and then also to help because it's it's hard being cooped at, at home so if right. you can kind of get out of the house for a second this is kind of a double whammy in doing that um but also a lot of adults too um so it's it's really inspiring um i would say the most inspiring thing 
out of it all is to see the interfaith aspect of it. Out of our 500 volunteers, I would say close to 250 of them are um, non-Muslim. Um, and when we launched this project, although it was started by Michigan Muslims, um, we take pride in the sense that it's, this is for anyone who needs the service. You don't have to be Muslim to um, be a volunteer. You don't have to be Muslim to you know, receive the services. Um, it's really for anyone and everyone. Um, and it's been really great to kind of see that um, faith work in it because at the end of the day, when you want to help your neighbor, it doesn't matter if you're a Muslim, Hindu, Christian, um, it's just, you know, being human, you want to be there for others um, and you want to help them during difficult times. Yeah, that's very true, especially during a time like this where, mm -hmm. you know, this disease doesn't discriminate in that way. I mean, systemically, there's a lot of, you know, discrimination towards who is disproportionately affected, but in terms of like anyone could get it. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. When you say systemically, I think that's one thing um, that we really quickly realized that um, when we start launch the service um, in places like Flint, like this stuff is happening on an ongoing basis. It didn't take COVID-19 for someone to um, need water or to help get groceries. Um, so this really showed us kind of the root um, of where people need help year round. Um, and there's great organizations that do this work and help. Um, but there's still like a need for a lot of volunteers to really kind of just keep it going. Um, and how do we, you know, what it, what is this going to look like after COVID? Um, how do we continue this work and to make sure that people are being helped on all fronts? Yeah, there's definitely now more than ever, I think, a need for longevity and sustainability when it comes to these kind of efforts, because we're seeing that, like you said, it's not just during these times that the, this is a necessity for people. It's sort of unfortunately always there. And it's during these times that we're made more aware of it or it's brought to you know, the forefront. Um, so talking about, you know, the, the, we talked about the growth of the, um, the volunteers and how that you know, was rather exponential very fast. Do, uh, I'm interested if there has been growth in the grocery service um, overall and what that growth has looked like and how it's changed since you started well over a um, month and a half ago, two months now at this point. Yeah, um, so the first week um, it was slow, right? We had about five to seven <coughs> orders. I was, uh, and, but you know, we, we understood that. We we're like, okay, right now is the time to kind of get out the word and make sure people know about it. Now we have um, some weeks, we have close to like 40, 50 orders a week. Um, I will give a shout out to our uh, Flint team, um, Dua. She's our grocery lead. She um, is really doing a phenomenal job of just like, when I look at their WhatsApp chat of all of the volunteers and all of the you know clientele that's coming in, um, they're just really, really killing the game. So it really just depends. Um, I think um, I think what happens is in the beginning, we were seeing that people were so worried about COVID, right? So they were like stocking up on all the stuff. Um, and then two and a half weeks later, people started running low on their stocks. Mm -hmm. um, also, a big change that we did in the beginning, this started off that um, it was just kind of like a catch-all grocery service for all. But then we really quickly realized the amount of people that needed the help. And we quickly realized, um, you know, how can we reach as many, you know, as many people as we can, but also be um, sustainable when it comes to, you know, getting the funds. There's, there's a lot of donations that are going in different places and we wanted to be um, really um, careful on how we were like spending those donations when it came to the grocery service, who was getting the financial aid and so on. Um, so now what we've transitioned to, especially during the Ramadan, are food boxes. So now when someone calls, rather than take like a full intake, as much as I want to, you know, as much as we want to be able to get everyone, you know, everything that they want, it just made sense to kind of create like these standard food boxes that have like your basic necessities like milk, eggs, um, and so on. And so that has been really great. Um, we've also taken the step to make it even more contactless where we don't need people to um, only one day a week, we do the whole, you know, go to the grocery store and pick it up. Um, but Saturdays and, uh, Saturdays and Sundays, we've partnered with Al Hadamain from Hamtramck. Um, and they are the ones that ha are supplying the food and you just go and you pick up the box from there. They load it right into your car and then you go deliver it to wherever you need to go deliver. So we really wanted to kind of make this full circle to make sure that we 
we were supporting our small businesses who are also um, you know, kind of suffering during this time, going through a really, really difficult time. Um, and then um, it all really worked out well. So our volunteers are, you know, working really safely with this. Um, we have great grocery stores like El Hadamein who are providing us with um, the basic necessities. And then um, we still, you know, do take grocery orders um, certain days of the week. Wow, that's great. Um, I wanted, well, you kind of answered I was going to ask how Ramadan has changed, um, you know, the grocery service and maybe like if families are ordering different things and if the quantities of certain things have changed, but you touched upon that with uh, the fact that you're putting out these Ramadan or like food boxes. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's a great idea. And I know that a lot of other organizations also do that. And it does make a lot of sense to be able to provide people with the necessities at the very least, so that that's a staple that they don't have to go out for, especially because those are now, you know, low stocked at most grocery stores. So you have a, a really hard time finding something like flour, which I could not find at a grocery store for like three weeks. Um, after the first day at home order came out. So I, I, I think people would are really appreciative of something like that. Um, yeah, you know, it, it's, it was an idea that was sparked by the Amity Foundation and mm -hmm. they are a meal, I guess you can call it like a meal delivery nonprofit that happens year round. Um, and that was kind of like another big thing for us because although this is like a grassroots effort with different partners and institutions and volunteers and so on, um, there are a lot of funds and there are a lot of are a lot of volunteers that are coming our way and we want to make sure those get translated to another nonprofit who is doing similar work and so we really quickly partnered up with the Amity Foundation who does these meal delivery programs year round um, specifically in the Dearborn and Dearborn Heights yeah. community but um, you know they they expand their work to really whoever needs to help um, and so we're really kind of honored to work with them because they've really given us the ins and out and how to structure the program. Yeah, that's great. We, I think it's uh, great to see the support between, you know, existing organizations and nonprofits that have been around for a while and sort of helping the grassroots ones that are coming out of, you know, this pandemic or growing out of it. So um, I think that's just a very positive thing to hear during this time. So Sumeya, before I leave you, I just wanna ask, uh, is there, how can people help support what you are doing? Is there a way for them to maybe donate it? How can they sign up to be a volunteer? What is it that you know the Michigan Muslim Community Grocery Service needs at this time? And how can people from our communities help in that? Yeah, so um, I would say one, definitely visit our website at www.mimuslims.org. Um, that will give you the opportunity to donate if you can. It has flyers that you can really spread the word about. Um, one, to help us get more volunteers and for you to sign up as a volunteer. But two, for also you know using those flyers and using those materials to spread it in the communities that you think may be interested. Um, and again, it's for anyone who needs the service. Um, so definitely take a look at our website, mimuslims.org. Um, and at the same time, um, even if the grocery service program is not something that you can be a part of right now, um, we've also started two more projects. Uh, um, we really quickly started two more projects, which is one, making masks for healthcare heroes. Um, so you can be a part of helping sew masks or donate funds to that. Um, and then two, um, donating money to help provide iftars to um, families in the area around Muslim Center. And um, yeah, so there's, you know, there's other different projects that kind of has stemmed from this. And with Ramadan, I think it's a great way people want to give back. Um, and if you want to volunteer, great. If you want to spread the word, great. And um, if you want to donate, great. So any way that you can help with that would be really helpful. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. I wish you and your family, you know, a great Ramadan. Uh, and to everyone who, you know, is here with us, joining us today, uh, watching this, thank you so much. And we'll see you on the next one. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum.